Well, we start with a potentially seismic ruling for the future of football. The European Court of Justice has today decided FIFA and UEFA acted unlawfully in blocking the European Super League two and a half years ago. Over the course of several chaotic days, these 12 clubs, 12 of the biggest clubs in Europe, tried to set up a breakaway Super League and straight away felt the full force of UEFA's rules. But could it be reignited in some form? Real Madrid and Barcelona have been leading the fight to form a rival competition and the Grand Chamber of the European Court of Justice has today decided UEFA and FIFA acted against EU competition law. However, both governing bodies have today issued strong responses to the new ruling. Here are the key points from the ruling. FIFA and UEFA rules blocking the formation of a competition such as the Super League are contrary to EU law. The European Court of Justice has ruled that FIFA and UEFA were abusing a dominant position in blocking them. Crucially, this ruling does not mean a competition such as the Super League must necessarily be approved, and the court is not ruling on the specific Super League project. However, UEFA and FIFA must now listen to any proposals for a new project such as the Super League. Indeed, there is big news today, and that news is that football is free. Free from the monopoly of UEFA, free to pursue the best ideas without fear of sanctions, and under our proposal, free viewing of all live matches. But more on that later. Let's start with the ruling. This morning, the European Court of Justice ended UEFA's near 70-year monopoly by determining that FIFA and UEFA's rules on prior approval of inter-club competitions are contrary to European Union law. They have also determined that FIFA and UEFA rules making any new inter-club project subject to their prior approval are pro and prohibiting clubs and players from those playing those competitions that they are also unlawful the court has effectively opened the door to innovation in football and clubs can now openly discuss and consider proposals to address the sport's most pressing issues. The ECJ is the highest court in the European Union and therefore this rules cannot be and this ruling cannot be appealed. And it paves the way for the creation of a new, more exciting competition at European level in which clubs can determine their own future. All within the existing European football family. So again, the strongest message today goes out to the fans. Football is free. Well, let's get some reaction from around the football world. Pep Guardiola has just been speaking in Saudi Arabia in his pre-match news conference ahead of the Club World Cup final. But the Manchester City boss wasn't giving anything away about what he thought about the idea of a new European Super League. I'm not going to comment. In, 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 before hours, before the play of final of the World Cup, I will not talk one second this track about that. So we have time to reflect what the sentence and the lawyers and the clubs will decide what you have to do. Well, Manchester United were the first English club to have their say and they've insisted they remain fully committed to participation in UEFA competitions. United were one of the founder clubs of the ultimately doomed Super League venture in 2021. United say their position hasn't changed. As well as remaining fully committed to UEFA competitions, they also remain committed to positive cooperation with UEFA, the Premier League and fellow clubs through the European Clubs Association on the continued development of the European game. What about Unai Emery? The Aston Villa boss says he's enjoyed competing in UEFA's European competitions and his only focus is on reaching Europe next season with Aston Villa. I don't know what I can respond about it because my Super League is Premier League. Tomorrow the match against Sheffield. Of course, I like to play in Europe. I enjoy playing Champions League, I enjoy playing Europe League, I enjoy playing Conference League with, uh, with uh, Aston Villa. And I don't know exactly 
how they want to create a new structure. I respect everybody, I respect every decision, but I can only speak about our way and our, about our competition we are facing, and for me, uh, it's, it's not more. And I want to focus the match tomorrow, and I want to play in Europe with Aston Villa. Got a statement about an hour ago from the Premier League. Here's what it said. This is a significant ruling, and we will now fully examine its implications for the game. The ruling doesn't endorse the so-called European Super League, and the Premier League continues to reject any such concept. Supporters are of vital importance to the game, and they have time and again made clear their opposition to a breakaway competition that severs the link between domestic and European football. The Premier League reiterates, the statement goes on, its commitment to the clear principles of open competition that underpin the success of domestic and international club competitions. Football thrives on the competitiveness created by promotion and relegation. The annual merit-based qualification from domestic leagues and cups to international club competitions and the long-standing rivalries and rituals that come with weekends being reserved for domestic football. The Premier League will continue to engage in an open and constructive dialogue with all relevant football stakeholders on how best to protect and enhance the complementary balance of domestic and international club football. And the FA added, we note the judgment of the ECJ today in the European Super League case. UEFA's rules and the relevant rules in place in England have been strengthened since the proposal of the ESL, the Super League, in 2021, with the FA rules regarding the supervision of competitions and matches updated in October of 2021. Well, this afternoon, the UEFA president, Alexander Cheferin, held a news conference. He was flanked by La Liga boss, Javier Tebas, and the Paris Saint-Germain president, Nasser Al-Khalifi. Amongst the senior European journalists asking the questions was Sky's uh, Geraint Hughes. What did he say? Um, he was irritated, annoyed, I think, by the emergence of A22. That's the company... Uh, behind the proposals, which we, we, we saw a little bit earlier just now, and also uh, behind the, the European Super League project uh, two and a half years ago. Um, uh, Alexander Chiferin could not really hide his annoyance, that irritation, dare I say anger, just a few days before Christmas as, as well. In, in part, he, he mocked it. He dismissed it, but he knows that he has to uh, address the issue because it's come from the court, like the ECJ. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's it's quite clear where how he feels about this and where he thinks uh, any breakaway Super League can go and where it, and if it could ever happen. Um, so, yeah, irritation, annoyance, uh, anger, mocking were kind of, I think, the themes of, of, of the, the head of UEFA's uh, initial response to, to A22 and also the ECJ ruling as well. Uh, let's hear exactly how he responded. I'm so happy that we saw the presentation and that it's clear now that they are offering a close competition, which we knew all the time, but they tried to present publicly. It's not true. I've seen today the press release of English supporters who call it the zombie league. They didn't use that. They used blue league and, and some other colors as well. Uh, but despite that, we will not try to stop them. We, even before, we never uh, tried to stop them. Uh, and we said that, even I said that publicly many times. They can create whatever they want. I hope that uh, they start their uh, fantastic uh, competition as soon as possible with, with two clubs. Uh, I, I, I hope they know what, what they're doing, which I'm not so sure about. And, Geraint, what sort of backlash have we been hearing from the proposals today from A22? Yeah, backlash is, is an interesting word because there has been a backlash because it's been a response to the ECJ ruling. But I actually think not so much a response to them. It's, 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 it's A22, uh, again, the company that's behind the proposal for a new competition. It, it's, it's the reaction to that, which I think you can describe uh, as, as a backlash. Because I think 
Who are we going to hear from now is the, is the head of an organisation called the ECA, the European Clubs Association. They represent almost 500 clubs from across Europe, including Bar Real Madrid and Barcelona, pretty much every big club that there is to be had a, a, across Europe. So the reality of where we're going to go with this, if you've got UEFA and FIFA, as we'd expect, would be against it. But what's happened in the last two and a half years, is there's been a galvanising force, I suppose, with the clubs actually talking with UEFA, bringing about some reforms. They've got a joint venture going at the moment. So if you've got organisations like that, FIFA Pro, who represent the players, who are kind of all against any kind of breakaway European Super League, you've got to kind of think, well, where can this actually go today, tomorrow and going forward? Let's hear from the chair of the ECA, this body that represents almost 500 clubs, football clubs within Europe, on his response to the ECJ ruling, but also to these A22 proposals today. I have seen this so many times before, you know, around and around. They come every time they come with something, you know, but one thing if you notice, you, the media, you know, journalists here, the same presentation, the same videos, the same people, they are there. Same talks, talking about freedom, but it's not freedom, it's closed leaks. Um, you know, the clubs, you know, as chairman of the ACA and we have the clubs, last two hours, I received, I don't know, 40, 50 calls from different clubs, from leagues, from, from really different that, listen, whatever, this is a not legal contract. This is a social contract, social agreement between us. This value, there's a value that we defend. It's not about agreement. I said it before, and I'll say it on behalf of the clubs, all of them, all the stakeholders sticking together and the same. We're so proud being a partner with UEFA, so, so proud to play all this competition. I mean, they're promoting, you know, Super League, which trophy behind them, Champions League, UEFA, Champions League trophy behind them, which is a little bit, for me, a little bit strange. Garrett, if you go back to 2021 and the initial doomed project, six Premier League clubs were very much involved, very briefly. Are they up for it again? Key word, key, important question this, and a key word you said briefly there, and why? Because we talk about that word backlash. Where did the backlash come two and a half years ago? The fans, the supporters. It was incredible. It was a tidal wave against any, any notion of a European Super League from those six big mega clubs that exist within the, the Premier League. An absolute tidal wave from the feelings of fans. And it made people who didn't think fans had a voice or that they mattered. It made them think, oh my word, they do have a voice and they do matter. And they do. Because... The Premier League now, you've heard, Nick, you, you read out that statement from the Premier League, which basically says, if you want to be part of the Premier League, well, you can't really go and go and break away and do, do something like this. But there's a greater force at play here. We are all bound by law and legislation in this, in this country. And regardless of the colour of the government we have right now or that might be in the future, there's one thing that all political parties have signed up to, and that is the Football Governance Bill and a UK regulator. And by early next year, that will be law. And this regulator has the power, will have the power, to stop clubs in England from the Premier League. If they want to be part of a domestic setup like this, they cannot, by law, go away and join any breakaway league, whether that would have been the European Super League notioned two and a half years ago or the proposals that have come forth today as well. They cannot do it. So if the basic question is, is the people who watch our channel, that view our content on our apps and on our websites as well, that are fans of the Premier Leagues, fans of the clubs, asking the question today is, what does this mean? Well, it doesn't matter because the law will set out very clearly next year is that clubs who want to be part of the Premier League, established in the Premier League with all the traditions, they can't leave and go and play in a breakaway league. They are not allowed to by law.
Thank you very much, Garan. Garan Hughes has been speaking to the boss of Europe's governing body, UEFA. What about the world governing body, FIFA? A response from them as well. Here is their statement. In line with its statutes, FIFA firmly believes in the specific nature of sport, including the pyramid structure, which is underpinned by sporting merit, and the principles of competitive balance and financial solidarity. Football owes its long and successful history to the above-mentioned principles, which FIFA, the confederations and the member associations will continue to promote in the future in the interest of all football fans worldwide. A reaction from some of the leading clubs as well. Atletico Madrid, they've said the European football family does not want the European Super League. Remember, they were involved amongst the original 12. Germany, France, England, Italy, Spain, except for Real Madrid and Barcelona, they put in brackets and so on. They don't want the Super League. We are in favour of protecting the European football family, safeguarding domestic leagues and ensuring that qualification for European competitions is achieved through on-field performance every season. Reaction to from Bayern Munich CEO Jan Christian Dresden, who says, it's very clear the door for the Super League at FC Bayern remains closed. Such a competition would represent an attack on the importance of domestic leagues and the statics of European football. And the two clubs at the heart of today's ruling by the European Court of Justice have had their say, Barcelona and Real Madrid. The president of the former, Joan Laporta, and the Real president, Florentino Pérez, both marking today's decision as a big moment for football. We believe that the time has come from clubs, and even more so for those that are owned by their members, such as Football Club Barcelona to have greater control over their destiny, over their future, over their own sustainability. First of all, I want to make it very clear that Barca's position on the matter of a new European League format is not at all intended to go against the Spanish League, nor against the national leagues in general. On the contrary, with an improved European competition and more resources for the clubs, the national leagues will become more balanced and competitive. What we want and what we will work towards achieving is to establish an open, constructive dialogue with the aim of generating positive and productive relationship between all parties. Permítanme que diga a los clubes europeos que estamos ante el comienzo de un nuevo tiempo en el que podemos trabajar en libertad, desde el diálogo constructivo, sin amenazas, sin actuar contra nada ni contra nadie y con el objetivo de innovar y modernizar el fútbol para seguir alimentando la pasión de los aficionados. Desde hoy, el presente y el futuro del fútbol europeo está por fin en manos de los clubes, de los jugadores y de sus aficionados. Nuestro destino nos pertenece y tenemos ante nosotros una gran responsabilidad. Este día marcará un antes y un después. Es un gran día para la historia del fútbol y para la historia del deporte. A completely different view from Barca and Real Madrid, just into us from another of the 12 clubs involved in the original doomed Super League, Inter Milan, who in a statement say... They reiterate their position that European football's future well-being can only be secured by clubs working together through the ECA, the Clubs Association, in partnership with collaboration and collaboration with UEFA and FIFA. As a club, we remain committed to the values that underpin the European sports model and to working alongside the ECA and our fellow clubs to uphold those values. That's just in from Inter Milan.